CSR uh, lecture series in rural development. Uh, the CSR PPP PA uh, Center of National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, as you know, has been conducting a series of lectures in different areas of private sector work in the areas of development. Our focus has been corporate social responsibility, of course, but we are also very much interested to learn about social enterprises, how these enterprises are developed, and how we can sustain and survive in uh, this current uh, particular economic landscape that we are working in. So with that, we are very enthused have Dr. Harish Hande uh, with us today. Uh, he has joined us uh, from uh, uh, he's the co-founder of Selco, as you know. Uh, so before I invite uh, Dr. Hande and I uh, introduce him in detail, I would like to request our center head, Dr. Ramesh Saktivin, who has joined us from Hyderabad, to deliver a short welcome address, and then we'll move on to the main content. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Ruchira. Am I audible? Uh yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I particularly like to thank uh, Dr. Harish Sunday for joining us in this important uh, event that we have planned. And uh, in fact, our director general is preoccupied with two sudden programs with the minister's visit to NARD. Right now, she is here, and uh, all my uh, faculty colleagues are also there busy attending the program. Uh, but anyway, uh, we will continue to have this um, session as planned, so we don't um, want to uh, postpone this important lecture. So for us, uh, uh, the social enterprise is an important area. So in fact, um, the uh, NGO uh, sector and the social development sector or CSR, today is, uh, I mean, currently, if you look at, there is a big opportunity to transform themselves from the traditional way of funding and uh, development programs that they uh, continue to do. And Selco, we have been reading about Selco's work, and that's why uh, we, we wanted you to especially uh, address this on this occasion, sir. And uh, uh, particularly, we feel uh, there's a big opportunity for the NGO sector to transform themselves into a higher order entity in the form of social enterprises. So we would like uh, you to guide them in this process. And um, I mean, all of them, I mean, if they don't transform, probably the traditional way of working will be an hindrance in uh, achieving their goals and uh, meeting the objectives of bringing uh, upliftment of the people into from the basic uh, level of development that is being happening with the government support and other traditional way of funding. But when you look at the higher order issues like in the health sector or in the agriculture mm -hmm. or other 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 sectors uh, including energy that of course you have been addressing energy but um, other sectors if you look at there is a big opportunity for a social enterprise to play a role in guiding the people handholding them and helping them to achieve what they can best achieve from the rudimentary development uh, objectives that has been going on in the country for several years so so with this objective we thought uh, we had a lecture previously on the social stock exchange uh, last month mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to have uh, another thing and also we are planning something on uh, social enterprise in the form of uh, <clears throat> um, um, and microfinance uh, based social enterprises in the coming lectures but uh, selco has been a comprehensive entity that has been addressing all these issues so probably your lecture will be uh, more relevant for us and uh, the participant to understand and what they can really take on from this. And all, of course, you will be speaking on uh, Selco's uh, experiment and how it has gone to a level which uh, which is really delivering um, um, development in the, uh, as a social enterprise. So that is also will be useful for us and also some pointers for them to take off, uh, take from here and start looking at how the NGOs and CSR entities also, how they can guide social enterprise and support them. So with this background, I don't want to stop, uh, stand in between you and the participants. I'd like to thank you for um, I mean, uh, accepting our request and joining us. And also I would like to thank the participants for uh, joining in huge number today. Thanks a lot and uh, over to Ruchira. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for setting the context and starting the discussion. I will cut down on my introductory uh, part that I was about to say, and I will straight to introducing uh, Dr. Hande to our participants. Uh, Dr. Harish Hande is the founder of Selco Solar Light Private Limited. He graduated from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur, and a master's and PhD from University of Massachusetts, US. He got the idea of bringing solar lighting system to rural India when he was doing his PhD on sustainable energy at the University of Massachusetts. During a field visit to Dominican Republic, he was surprised to find poor villagers using solar lighting. And this is what inspired him to bring solar lighting to the rural poor of India. 
Selco India, under the leadership of Dr. Hande, has won several awards after starting the social enterprise in 1995. It won the Ashton Award for Sustainable Energy in 2005, Accenture Economic Development Award on the same year. Selco India won the Ashton Award again for Outstanding Achievement in 2007 in the energy sector. And it was presented by Al Gore, the former Vice President of the United States of America at the time. He was named the Social Entrepreneur of the Year 2007 by the Schwab Foundation of Social Enterprise Entrepreneurship and Nandan Jeet Kemka Foundation. In 2008, he was chosen by Business Today as one of the 21 young leaders of India's 21st century. Later in June 2008, India Today also named him as one of the 50 pioneers of change in India. He was elected as an Ashoka Fellow in 2008. In 2011, Dr. Hande was awarded the Max Hesse Award for his passionate and pragmatic efforts to put solar power technology in the hands of the poor and encouraging the poor to become asset creators. He was also awarded the Karnataka Rajyot Sabha Prashasti in 2011 by the government of Karnataka. In 2013, the trustees of the University of Massachusetts awarded him the Doctorate of Humane Letters. In 2014, IIT Kharagpur also conferred upon him the Distinguished Alumnus Award. Dr. Hande is a member of multiple boards of many national and international organizations currently, and he is helping to build social enterprises. And I hope that today he will also guide you and you know, share his experiences and share his knowledge about social enterprise landscape in India. Thank you very much, Dr. Hande, and uh, welcome to the lecture series of NIRDPR. And I would like to switch over the mic to you and uh, listen to you, and our participants will also join uh, in a discussion after your presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Uchira, for that kind, and thank you, Ramesh Ji, for the for the introduction, and thank, thanks, ma'am, for that uh, uh, for 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 the for the for the introduction, which I I'm not sure whether I deserve it uh, because I got those awards because I speak English, um, uh, and uh, and in a country like ours, uh, we we true social enterprises are run by numerous people, uh, organize uh, numerous young entrepreneurs in the rural areas. And unfortunately, uh, the ecosystem exists in a, such a way the only people who can actually present in PowerPoints actually get the money. So, so how do we how do you break that uh, um, the concept that uh, presentations while um, so like for example, if you and me did a PhD on sugarcane, we'll be called experts of sugarcane. But a farmer doing 45 years of sugarcane will never be called an expert because he or she does not have a PhD. So, so the, how do we break those um, the hierarchies is one of the one of the goals of Selco. I mean, though yes, we are known for solar and being a social enterprise, but for us was how do we create an inclusive system inside and outside of the organization per se? Because um, there are numerous talented social entrepreneurs in rural area who do not get the same platform because of the because uh, of reasons, and one of the reasons being uh, not having access to to the to, to resources that that the elite actually take it away in a country like ours. So Selco was was, was created to push those boundaries um, in many ways. So way back in 1994, we started this enterprise saying that how do we create an enterprise that can be truly run by people who are from the grassroots? Um, and how do we establish that it's it truly represents um, the values that the that the that the farmers that the um, that the uh, blacksmith blowers the barber shops the the needs uh, and and how do you how do you create an organization that tr truly meets the needs of the poor by treating them as partners and and uh, and not as um, not as beneficiaries uh, how do you treat them as uh, part uh, partners in innovators not somebody that we are giving help to. Uh, how do we remove the word help? How do we remove the word beneficiaries? And then, uh, and then finally, Selco also was telling me, how do you look at profit sharing in, in a manner that is truly inclusive? It's not about being owned by a couple of people. Uh, and so, which again leads to uh, distribution of wealth in a very haphazard manner. And so, and so Selco, uh, start, so I'll come to that one by one, but Selco, when it started in, um, I, uh, uh, Selco, when it started in 94 95 it basically looked at uh, solar lighting as the first base to start because if you look at in 1994 95 a lot of our fellow citizens did not have access to basic electricity for lighting things have improved a lot over the years but that time of at point of time the primary source for energy for especially for lighting was kerosene 
and we used to say that solar is expensive for the rich and affordable for the for the for the poor because the poor were spending more out of their income for kerosene and so when ramesh ji talked about the higher order of social enterprise i'll give you an example when people said solar is expensive for the for for for, for the for the uh, and saying that oh solar cannot be afforded unfortunately what happens is many a time when you when you start a business the focus is now is on how do you sell a technology without actually looking at the actual need of the poor to to take an example in in the siddhi community if, if many of you know the siddhis are these african slaves who were brought in by the portuguese um around 150 years ago and based out of central karnataka parts of gujarat and then pakistan these siddhis actually spend uh, earn around 1500 is to earn 1500 to 2000 rupees a month out of which 150 rupees a month used to go for uh, for kerosene lighting basic lighting 150 rupees a month and another 40 rupees would go into phone charging because their village did not have electricity and they would go to the nearby village to so approximately 200 rupees a month on 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 energy costs uh, and multiplied by 12 it cost 2500 rupees a year and multiplied by 5 is 12500 rupees a um, um in 5 years for kerosene and other lighting right are the basic needs of energy if a solar system was financed at 14% by a regional rural bank the rrb or the gramin bank at 12% or 12.5% it costs around 10000 rupees now 12000 rupees versus 10000 rupees solar was a cheaper option so the question was not about affordability what they were paying 200 rupees for kerosene they could have actually paid to the bank technology was not an issue technology existed the issue was the willingness of the bank to finance the poor because these these siddhi communities had houses 30 by 30 and and the banker basically told me harish i like, come on i mean they're not going to pay pay us back so we asked the bank for the 30 families what do you need from us what what guarantee would you give so he basically said the banker said 100% guarantee what we did was we had used some philanthropic money kept 100% guarantee in the bank for those 30 families after 6 months when i went to the bank and asked how is the collections they said collections is fantastic and i said if you knew this 6 months ago what guarantee would you have taken from us they said 20% so i immediately removed 80% money out and basically leveraged 20% to unlock local capital and now the same bank over the period has fa- financed more than 500 households so equivalent to my leverage is 1000 times saying with that small intervention of 30 which is what led to the bank actually financing it so when i went and asked the siddhis how is the loan they said fantastic i mean lighting is great but once i finish the loan i'll take a loan for a sewing machine so what she meant was that i have become bankable so the beauty of solar energy is that it pushes people multiple rungs in the social ladder they become bankable they're able to earn so but what happens today in as ramesh ji clearly point pointed out the old methodology of charity would have been can we do do this 30 houses free of cost no if we had done free of cost we would not have done 1000 plus using the same bank so i would request csr uh, csr companies and and see organizations that run csr programs not to i mean not to keep doing traditional thought process charity and make it a year long like okay everything is march 31st we need to break away from the concept of march 31st because development cannot be done on a march 31st arena it's a poverty cannot have a timeline poverty has a has, needs to have a process it cannot be said okay march 31st if csr monies are allocated for creating such ecosystems like putting a guarantee in the bank to reduce the interest rates for the poor to do that it actually has a long term impact that the same guarantee now is 100% still in the bank now it has financed more than 1500 houses while in a charity case you would have given all the money out and you would have done only 30 houses but now you have done more than 15 how 1500 houses without actually using the money so if csr organizations actually work with grassroots level organization to do a human centric program design thought process which will have a longer term impact more number of people get the actual surpluses from the same amount of resources so so selco started pushing the boundary same example i would say of a street vendor for example we 
a street vendor normally spends between eight, 10 to 15 rupees on a daily basis on kerosene and diesel, which is 450 rupees on a monthly basis. And if you and that's none of us pay on a on a small solar or not small kerosene light 450 rupees. So what we did was we created what she needed is not solar light. She needed four hours of reliable lighting. So what we did was we created an entrepreneur. We put a guarantee in the bank against which the, which the entrepreneur took a loan. He, he, he put up solar panels on top of his roof. He charged 30 batteries daily or 50 batteries on a daily basis. He would deliver the lights to the street vendors at six o'clock. And 10 o'clock, he would remove the battery and get for charging. He would charge the individual street vendors 10 rupees. So instead of them spending 15 rupees on kerosene and candles, that now they were spending 10 rupees. They were saying 5 rupees. For the entrepreneur, per battery, the loan that he had taken from the bank was 6 rupees. So he was making a profit of 4. I have not used the word poverty. I have not used the word climate change. I have not used the word environment. It's a pure modeling of where is the money is actually required? What is the actual need of the end user? How can that be actually tailor made? And that's when Sel Selco started pushing the boundaries of not only technology innovations, which has started, what is the type of light does a banana vendor need? A banana vendor needs a yellow light because the spots of a banana are not visible in a yellow light, while a tomato vendor needs white light because under a white light, it actually shines better. How do you look at the different needs of a church, a mosque, a temple, uh, a street vendor selling potatoes, bananas, or brinjals, or a residential house or orphanage, a two-bedroom house, three-bedroom house in a slum area, or a two-bedroom, three-bedroom in an urban area? What are the needs? How do you redesign a health center? How should a maternal labor room be designed? What is the power requirements for a baby warmer, an autoclave? What is the positioning of the bed so that so that it, it's not a discomfort for the lady in terms of the type of uh, roofing, the lighting? That's the beauty of looking at decentralized energy is that it brings in a human centric design thought process while and then how do you come up with different financial instruments? For example, a paddy farmer will say I will pay once a year because my harvest is once a year. A sugarcane farmer will say twice a year. A street vendor says daily. A school teacher in a rural area says I can pay monthly because my salary says. How do you work with the banks to come up with different financial products that matches the cash flow of individual users? So it becomes a, a, a interesting puzzle that you start working on for the rice breeders, for the millet peak kicker, for the farms in Manipur versus Meghalaya, the financing uh, programs of North Karnataka versus rural Karnataka. How, if a cooperative bank comes in, what type of financial product will be good for a hammer mill that the, that the blacksmiths actually use? So that's the way Selco actually started growing uh, with lighting in the initial basis. Slowly, it started to look at livelihood applications and then also started to look at uh, institutions like churches, temples, mosques, etc., uh, etc., et to make the business. The way Selco is structured, that it has three shareholders, and 20% of the profit is for the no profit is given out, but 20% of the profit is given to the least earning 40% of the employees. That's the structure that the that's why the turnover of Selco India in terms of people, we have 600 people. And out of the 600 people, we lose around five to seven on a on a yearly basis, and the profits have to be. So we keep 20% of the money for the least earning employees, and we keep 20% of the profits on a yearly basis for emergency, like uh, like somebody's house got destroyed in a flood, or people uh, kids have to go to college for education, or somebody's parents die for funeral costs. And the rest 60% of the money actually goes back for the future growth. So that's why we are saying that how can profits be inclusive? How can the organization be inclusive? And we don't take resumes. Uh, we, 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 we don't take degrees. If you come to Selco, you will not know who is an MIT graduate, who is an All India number two chartered accountant, and who is a fourth grade dropout. We are basically saying that keep your degrees outside. Keep what you speak in terms of elitism outside because you got a degree because your parents were in the right place. What we need people is people who can work for the development of the country in the truest form, in a sense that 
we don't have saturday holidays we said that we will give saturday holiday the day the poor have sunday holidays because today we live off the subsidies of the poor the, you never see a poor man saying that i need a break that's because we are not allowing that system for the poor to take a break and that's exactly the concept of social enterprise was to create an inclusive system that makes sure that poor become part of the society in a way that able to enjoy life as you and me actually do so that's when the philosophy of selco is very much in tune with the with what and that's why we said it's not about degrees do you have the passion a lot of people don't apply to selco looking at the salary level a lot of people don't apply because we don't have saturday working day a lot of or, or, or non working day a lot of people it gets very frustrated i mean it's a very frustrating 24/7 job because it's about 9 out of 10 times you'll hear no because the banker will say no the poor will say no do, do you have the patience to get over that hump and say that i am going to create need based solutions as a partner to the poor convincing all the related shareholders to be part of that that change per se the local banks the local ngos the local vocational schools like the itis for local technicians and that's when selco started to put those things in process uh, of of putting those those pieces of the puzzle so it started with two people in 1994 95 we are now on around 800 people uh, we've been profitable from 2006 continuously now um and lot of the colleagues who run the organization don't come from the english speaking background at all um at all i mean top management has nobody speaking english um i left the active management some years ago i'm on the board but it's run by mohan egre who is a who is a brilliant um, manager who who made selco the only profitable rural solar company in the world during covid but he doesn't unfortunately get recognized because because english is not his first language and 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 that's where sometimes for me it's a guilt feeling that every every credit i have taken that's because i spoke english and how do we create a system that that empowers the true innovators and entrepreneurs of our country who don't do powerpoint presentation who don't write proposals in word document who don't who and so that talent exists and sell 99% of selco's talent comes from the rural areas who have developed these processes about how to talk to a chart sheet vendor and what type of intervention she needs versus a pottery maker in in upper karnataka to a pani puri vendor in uh, per se dharwad what are the energy needs what are the motor how do you customize it to what is the cash flows what type of banks is it a finance bank is a cooperative bank it is a is it an mfi or is it an rrb what type of product then also we work with partners especially when as selco started to diversify from lighting to livelihoods it's not about just putting solar powered sewing machine because solar powered sewing machine okay i increase somebody's production but if she doesn't know how to sell the extra six shirts then the technology that i have intervened is a is a loss making who are the partners who, who can actually do the market linkages we ourselves do not have the expertise we are good in creating the interventions and installing the intervention talking to the banks to giving her a loan but the market linkages has to be done by the partners that we it's a if you don't put all the pieces of the puzzle together you yourself will not be sustainable nor the end user will be sustainable so the concept of of selco has been how do you create an inclusive ecosystem where the most of the value of your intervention is actually captured by the poor and part of that profits is made by selco for our own sustainability for our own growth so if one looks at social sustainability and and environmental sustainability together where it increases the value for the the poor end users it's not a value just in terms of showcase but value in terms of the quality of life value in terms of increased income or value in terms of increased access to health automatically you will become profitable so the question is where profitable for for the social cause for inclusiveness so we've used philanthropic capital for innovation for the ecosystem right for example i want to innovate for 20 women um uh blacksmith blowers 
who are not getting uh, the uh, uh, a good loan from the bank so we would use philanthropic capital to reduce the interest or provide a guarantee and that is where csr funds is how do you utilize csr funds to create an ecosystem that will then be permanent not do projects not do programs but a conceptual creation of the ecosystem where the most expensive philanthropic money should be used for creating rather than asking an impact end of one year should ask an impact how will it create a process that will be generational not a process oh, i have done 10 houses no what is a process that will lead to 10000 houses in 5 years that should be the question that should be asked by the different program managers of the csrs and that is where the that is the much needed support for social enterprises and especially vernacular speaking social enterprises who have difficulty in raising capital elsewhere and 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 that is where i think we need to become inclusive in our thought process in a country like ours if to truly develop manipur meghalaya mizoram tripura to the rural parts of kerala tamil nadu gujarat as well as as, as rajasthan so selco today has around six, between 650 to uh, our 800 sorry it employs around 60 offices in 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 rural karnataka maharashtra uh, uh, kerala and parts of uh, parts of tamil nadu uh it's it's a top management is it's pretty vernacular extremely vernacular in its thought process uh, and and uh, and that is why they have been able to we don't do any advertisements you will not see a single billboard you will not see any newspaper article uh, advertisements on us everything is really word to mouth it's a trust the local school teacher the local doctor the local postman are basically or the local priest the local father the local mullah of a of a of a, of a mosque all are our champions who are able to propagate the concept of sustainability and where selco comes in in terms of inclusiveness that's where uh, we are uh, in terms of uh, but more than happy from a question answer perspective it would be better to uh, do that uh, uh, and rather than my, me just speaking but we based uh, uh, we've been out on 28 years old um, it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, the 60 offices with with around 20 25 uh, senior level management in who work with uh, um different financial institutions and different financial products and different technical products right from roti rolling machine for north karnataka to silk weaving to how solar can increase the livelihoods it has also around 250 business associates out of which 225 are women business associates who bring in at least 20 to 18 to 20 crores of business for selco on a on a yearly basis so how do you look at gender inclusion how do you look at and so if you are able to create those parts of the business that old fashioned business is part of society you truly will be financially environmentally and socially sustainable thank you dr ruchira if i can do more through the questions it will be will be good fun yeah. absolutely uh, dr hande thank you for such a delightful talk and uh, we have around 150 participants with us and uh, we have a very varied kind of uh, group here some of them are uh, faculty themselves uh, some of the participants are actually grassroots ngos who are working currently in uh, different parts of india and they are looking for guidance uh, to strengthen their enterprise and strengthen their work I have now changed the host controls and uh, participants uh, you can uh, unmute your microphone and ask your questions you can also send your questions in the form of chat messages in the inbox we will read it out for you uh, but uh, before our participants start the questions uh, i would like to uh, um, invite if uh, dr shakti vel is here if uh, sir you if you have any comments to it and then we can move on to the question and answer session i think um, uh, it was a wonderful uh, presentation and what we uh, were actually looking for i think um, um, in uh, your your um, <coughs> this um, introduction or your uh, talk really paved the, the path for it and uh, we we really we are looking at how this can be a, a long uh, like like you rightly put in like this long term <laughs> Uh, so uh, strengthening community action and all these things currently 
is being uh, in a, in a problem uh, with funding mode right. and uh, funding right. Right. not coming and the fcra right. is a problem right. uh, i mean philanthropy is reducing like i mean except csr is growing that's a big right. potential like you rightly touched upon right. we, we keep saying that how do we leverage this and uh, csr also is be- becoming prey to this uh, fundamental same mistake that uh, development sector has been doing uh, similar pre- they are falling into the same trap and uh, they are just trying to spend money and uh, uh, trying to turn around uh, one year every year uh, investments and trying to wash their hands and most of the csr have problem in even spending You know, and with that you know. kind of spending their problem so i think that's where your uh, speech really it, it inspires us to uh, look at this possibilities and uh, how organizations can really marry this new um, in, uh, method of working and then implement this as part of their process it really requires a, a mindset change and uh, in the management um, uh, of the, the entities which are there the potential is very huge like you rightly pointed out that is a, there is a huge potential wherein people's resources and also you um, you mentioned that sustainability of a project also is a key uh, which right. we have been struggling and uh, i think this is an answer for your solar and i mean a small i uh, mean a way of um, uh, trying to see that you are implanting the sustainability angle right from the beginning when it is a social enterprise driven uh, process so, so the products are also very sound and also the management and there is a real felt need by where people invest uh, their own money when people invest their right. own money i don't think you have an issue of sustainability and impact so that's that's also uh, coming very uh, clearly uh, from the approach that you have been speaking sir i think um, these are some pointers from i mean for me to highlight and um, there is a big power and that's what i said that we'll be happy to uh, talk to you more on this and see how csr funds can be uh, channelized and lot more vernacular like you touched upon that i think we have a lot of friends in this uh, group who have joined they all are from small towns small districts uh, who cannot speak english i mean they they are struggling uh, they keep attending our programs and uh, we keep inspiring them so you say look you have to find answers So the problem funding will not just come like that uh, you have to right. really um, i mean find your way i think probably your case is um, i mean what you presented is inspiring sir. so i think i hope it will be very useful for those youngsters and others who are uh, willing to do something big in their own areas of work thank you man appreciate it thank you thank you sir uh, and also uh, to kind of play the devil's advocate here um, i think sir you talked about the hierarchy part and uh, of course i understand like completely agree with the part that those who are at the grassroots are the main player here and uh, of course there is a huge uh, this uh, uh, this creation of this brand of certain entities who are kind of dominating the brand market but when you talk of expertise i think we also need to understand that the one who is kind of swimming although he is the one at the risk of drowning and he is the one at the pain of uh, swimming but definitely the one who is sit- standing on top of the hill will know that which shore is closer and whether the shore is close uh, at all or not so i think it's it's important to connect the person who is at the top with the person who is swimming so that the two can collaborate and you know reach the end goal uh, so with that uh, i really thank you for your time and there are questions that are coming in uh, some people will of course unmute and ask but in the uh, chat box itself i see there are some comments i will uh, read it out so uh, mr pankaj kumhar is asking that uh, as a small community based organization working in rural part how to create ecosystem of sustainable energy in local institutes like icds phc etc uh, and sir i would like to tell you that we are kind of uh, in the talk of so this uh, issue of grassroots organizations not being able to mobilize funding and competing with very large organizations who are uh, very well in disseminating their work and creating that brand image uh, some of our participants they are uh, joining in every program with us and they're facing this issue and this is their question is in every program that how do we compete and bring funding to the grassroots organizations especially those who are working in local institutions such as icds or phcs or now we are talking about financing the panchayats for uh, certain infrastructural areas so what is the way through which they can navigate this uh, landscape of funding etc so that i think that is the essence of the question of mr pankaj kumar if you can address that before we move on to the next person actually no no thank you for that it's a, it's a very difficult question you know it's it's a it's a uh, see what happens is the if you, if i uh, dr if you look at uh, 
the funding sources okay if you look at the funding sources you have private philanthropy you have foreign philanthropy and you have csr the issue is how now question is um, and many of them uh, for example come in uh, uh, in two parts of it right either coming from an existing grant mode so there is a colonistic thinking that i'm giving the money so you got to listen to me right uh, uh, and uh, the second is uh, i did not get a promotion that i'm shifted to the csr department right <laughs> so my aspiration is to get back right ek khatam karke chale jata hai right so now where is the question of empathy coming in right Oh, but these are the people who will actually create large impact for my CSR resources. Where is that type of people? I mean, there are no schools or channels that produce the future CSR managers, right? Okay, Irma, you come up with some social enterprise class here or there, but there is no true channels where. So what? So the question is, even having a strong name, Dr. Ruchira, is that? even in the foundation that we have we said boss how can we be the uh, channel partner for many of the rural grassroots level energy enterprises right we had difficulty i went to some of the good csr organization say that give me i will do the due diligence i will take zero overheads i will leverage money for you but i will do the regranting to these grassroots level ngos right so now we have succeeded after 2 years and the biggest issue is the can you harish finish by march 31st yaar hmm. are i mean that question is the critical now what has happened i have been able to successfully raise some development with a deadline <laughs> huh development with a deadline with a deadline how can you i mean it's like but that's why summer in last uh, in the last one year i've succeeded in actually convincing two of them to relook at uh, not one year but a three year funding especially for the grassroots energy uh, enterprises that are grassroots ngos that are focused on energy in the northeast okay but the question is dr richara that the larger organizations who are able to raise money also have to be responsible otherwise no they are no different to the big corporates that they complained against right see what they are saying oh the big corporates have a monopoly what are they then right they are no different to the big corporates that today i'm telling two things one is the csr organizations also should we should like for example as doc, as uh, ramesh ji and you are saying we should hold at least 10 champions in the csr sector to have a small meeting between you us and them and then Ten champions who are willing to go from one year to three year, and who are willing to put their capital to the bottom hundred uh, grassroots enterprises. If we can actually take it forward, that would be a good starting point to push the boundaries. And then these ten CSR managers should convince the another ten CSR managers to make. It. Then you have an exponential growth uh, to happen. that's a leadership that you and us can actually take together and say can we get 10 champions of uh, not the big names but 10 champions who think who can listen to us who can allocate decent amount of resource for funding that can we are not interested in the money but to showcase that this is how csr money can truly you have 27000 crores of csr it's unbelievable amount of money that can transform this country in many ways right but somewhere the path is not so we succeeded in two two of those institutions i think we should do a workshop with in a closed door with 10 uh, leaders from csr and say boss we will take the risk to we'll show then what we want you to do is convince 10 other csr to do the same thing we don't want money put it into the thousand grassroots enterprises even if 900 fail the 100 will change the country the question is why are we worried about failure right that 100 is what i want so i think can we can we should create a plan it's it's slowly morning not as fast as we would like to i think such partnerships will push those space up very very uh, interesting uh, we will definitely have a talk with you in detail about this uh, dr harish uh, coming back to the question of our participant mr apurva patel uh, is asking that 
uh, what factors do you think are important for social entrepreneurial resilience? And also you think we need a specific or a special legislation to foster a favorable social entrepreneurship ecosystem in India. So within the institution, what kind of factors can help make it resilient? And at the macro level, what kind of legislative changes we might require to uh, achieve that? So that's a Purva's question. See, one is, uh, I'm glad you asked the question. See, one is, uh, one is uh, the, the patience. Uh, I mean, see, what happens in this whole uh, era of the Twitters and the Facebooks of instant gratification, right? We need to go back to the old basis of business. A lot of, see, nine out of 10 times on a daily basis, you will hear is no, uh, it cannot be possible. Uh, not not possible, et cetera, et cetera, right? Who are the people who are able, because our education system is like that, no ma'am, in the sense that if a girl comes back home saying that I've got 96 out of 100, the first question we ask is, why did you lose your four marks, right? Uh, your cousin got 97, how come you? How do we get away from that concept of competing against somebody else, but are you solving it for the society rather than competing against somebody else, right? See, our projects are defined for grades, not for the impact in many ways, in even our, in our academic circles, right? How do we change that system to happen that this is this is a long-term uh, career that you're building? Uh, uh, how do we convince? So even, for example, if I go to any of the, uh, the IM or I go to any of the vocational school, if I'm able to convince one out of the 100, I've succeeded in actually changing that pattern. I, I don't need two. I need one person to come into our sector and say, I'm going to be at it for 30 years. How many? And there is there is a lot of rewards. I mean, the sense that every day is a new problem. You think that you have spent your 25 years, 28 years, but every day it, you wake up at 3 o'clock because that particular problem has not got solved, right? That adrenaline is too addictive. And 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 that that is one resilience. You build your own, the fire has to be in your own belly. In terms of government structures, I don't think so, because as long as it doesn't interfere into what I'm doing, in a sense, which is which is what I have actually had the luxury of happening. In and I have 25 African entrepreneurs in the next room who have come here, right? And who have much larger problem than ours. The only thing I would request to government is I'll actually relook at the tax structure of social enterprises. Don't tax us, like, for example, the software companies who provide services abroad, are not taxed while I'm providing solar to people who avoid kerosene and reduce the import for the country, I'm taxed 30%, right? So the question is, if those nuances are actually taken care, but otherwise I'm saying that the, there's enough, enough, in, 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 enough democracy in a way to run a social enterprise. Uh, it's the patience, uh, it's, the, it's the ability to, uh, and, and, and also to parents, you know, why I'm, particular uh, that one other challenge is not for me is not the tax structure for me is when i do hiring uh, dr uchira the challenge comes from parents uh, the parents come and tell me harish uh, uh, social enterprise he should do after 60 um, and then i talk about the bangalore traffic and they start complaining about bangalore traffic and then i say exactly you want mahatma gandhi to be born in neighbor's house not your house right it's about i don't want to give my son to the work that you're doing. Uh, he has to go because his cousin is earning more in Infosys. We know how to complain as a society that water is not working, but I would not ask my kids to go, right? That's the hypocrisy, right? For me is a lot of the youngsters who come cry and don't go home at late because the pressure from the parents. That is one of my biggest challenges. There is enough of youngsters who want to do that, but we're not creating that platform for them to flourish and i think we have enough of that in our country too but resilience clearly i i'm 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 so glad to see a lot of these youngsters uh who I, and that bodes well for a country like ours uh, except that we need to create pots of failure monies dr uchira where right where i can go and dip for failing Absolutely. So, so interesting to hear. In fact, I just remembered that uh, we attended uh, uh, this something called a philanthropy summit some time back. And uh, the uh, speaker there was just telling us that if you are not enjoying uh, the failures while you are working, then probably philanthropy is not for you because you will like it when things are working out, but you also like it when things are not working out. 
So uh, I will uh, uh, quickly ask because there are a lot of raised hands. Uh, I'll read out the questions in due time. No, either. Yet I would request uh, some of our participants. Yeah, che. Please mute yourself. Hello, sir. Mr. Dhananjay Rai, please mute yourself. Devendra Punawar. Tina. Hello, sir. Che, che. Yeah, be na. Do a pare. Baldi. Mute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, participants who have questions to ask, you may please unmute, introduce yourself, and ask the question, please. I see one hand raised uh, from uh, Sharda, and in between there were several hands raised, but I could not. OK, Mr. Nikhil, you can please unmute and ask. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Nikhil. Sir, this is Nikhil from Pune Management Association, uh, Pune. Uh, sir, in COVID uh, and afterwards, we also promoted the uh, energy-based uh, small CSR-based project. But due to such uh, uh, sort of high price rate and uh, raising uh, the cost of the panels and the accessories, we failed to manage this activity, sir. And uh, nowadays, when we promote the same activities for the CSR projects, as well as uh, finance management, uh, mostly people also in the grassroots are uh, they are reluctant that uh, this pay, some same projects are failing how how could motivate in such situations sir see the first of all nikhil sir uh, first of all the question is about what has failed see the question is what is the problem statement and what has failed uh, so it would be it would be good um, i mean uh, if dr uchera could share my number and name uh, email to you I would also introduce to some of my colleagues who can actually have a uh, which part has failed. Uh, so uh, to all, all the participant colleagues, please, please don't hesitate to call me or, or write me an email. Uh, I have um, a lot of young girls myself. Uh, it, it, it's something that we would love to. This is what our life is about. And uh, you please uh, so that we can go into specific problems and issues and 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 work together to solve those uh, nikhil sab so agar aap humko uh, directly likh le and to to separate a call mein pura ek solution karte hain bhai sir yes sir thank you sir do that i'll do that dr hand i'll share your number and contact details okay. so, the participants who are into the grassroots organizations yes, and who will uh, who will express their interest um, uh, so we have another question in the chat box uh, mr rahul is asking uh, that they're working for the Ganta Swaraj Foundation and they do work in solar based irrigation projects uh, in Palghar and Kokan region. And they want to know how they can, so they are doing it with the help of CSR, but they are interested to convert this into a social entrepreneurship model or an entrepreneurial model. And they also want to partner with the tribal farmers. So, any kind of uh, suggestions on that, they will be very helpful. Sure, no, no, I'll also see the thing is that this is a little. Uh, more discussion to happen, Dr. Ruchel. Like, I, I, we would like to know which part of yours is uh, not sustainable financially, which part is financially sustainable, which could be actually hived off using local financial institution, which should be actually still needing grant funding. So, something that we could kind of work, uh, work. Where are you? They based, they said Pathan, right? Where did they say, Dr. Ruchel? Uh, Palghar and uh, Palghar. 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 Okay, Palghar. So, so um, I have my two colleagues, Rucha, she's also from Pune, but based out of Bangalore. What we do is basically look at which part of the organization is, is nearly financial, sustainable, and that can actually be converted into a social enterprise. And which part of the part of your activities still need grant funding and still need, and why does it need grant funding? Is the two analysis we start doing it, then you can say that this part can be socially run by a social enterprise, while this can be still run by a foundation. Right. I'll connect you with Rahul and maybe you can uh, take it forward. Uh, there is another question uh, from, uh, so I cannot know the name, it's called SP. And they're asking that, uh, you're rightly mentioning that company CSR wings mostly have March ending targets. And that is why they don't have view to change their way of thinking or working. In this scenario, how to change the mindset of the CSR wings of companies and convince them of new funding option other than charity. Well, I sure. think there are two, three that's issues. A, that's that's a large question, but the question is, I would say uh, there's the same thing that I, I said a couple of minutes ago. We should have 
10 champions uh, so even when you are contacting csr companies nine out of ten will not agree to what you're saying uh, unfortunately because that's uh, because they have certain targets but my point is that uh, now this we should pick up that one champion and who that champion is is and there are few champions like for example dhruvi from access uh, there are uh, zia from hdfc they are all champions who think in terms of five years who think in terms of eight years we should bring those champions but one of the targets that we should keep to this champion is that bring another csr person along with you from another company because csr head of one company listens to the csr head of another company for example right one doctor listens to another doctor or lawyer listens to another lawyer same thing we need to create a consortium of champions who can say that we together have done this can the others actually join in so yes, it's an issue yes, that we are yes, dealing with yes, hopefully dr rachira together we can yes yes of course we'll talk about it and in fact that in irdpr we were talking about uh, as an apex body what kind of contribution can we bring to the csr landscape and this is Absolutely. a very interesting idea where we can make some change and some policy advocacy because some of the things are also not at the hands of companies if the policy requires them to submit a report right. then submit a report right. uh, so of course we can explore and uh, do something uh, similar uh, nishi francis is asking uh, uh, again a top of the hierarchy question that is the csr framework followed by selco based on a particular model uh, uh, such as bottom of pyramid model or a bhaskar chatterjee model if yes uh, what kind of model does selco follow is it does it have a holistic development approach of its own so something more theoretical uh, of a question if you can elucidate oh, selco's model has been uh, if you look at our hiring process um, if you look at our profit sharing process if you look at our uh, gender uh, inclusive process has been from day one has been of that saying that that's how businesses should be run and 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 uh, and the whole concept was uh, pre uh, the concept of social enterprise term had not been coined then i mean you're looking at 94 95 csr also came in much 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 later for us we felt that that's the only way to do business if you're truly inclusive uh, and 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 that's where uh, if I, was, I mean yeah so there are certain hiring see what we do um, uh, is that we have uh, first we have a bunch of four people who actually interview and the four people have uh, absolutely will never go into anybody's experience at all uh, we really don't care about people's past experience we basically say that does the he or she have the passion to to be in the organization or not to solve a problem that's all we talk about. We don't care whether you're an anthropologist, we are an economist, we are a fourth grade dropout or a 10th grade pass. We don't care. Do you have it in it to do that? And that's the first. And then the other interview starts, where will you fit in and where you don't fit in, for example. So we, yeah, so that's that's where we, we push for inclusiveness one way or the other, yeah. Right. Um, so uh, there is another question from uh, Kamaljeet Singh. Uh, it's asking that, do you suggest any plan or any model through which CSR funds can be spent in better ways? Uh, though the impact of CSR funds is not widely felt despite the jump in spending. So those who have the fund, how, how best can they spend it? My question is, to, I, I think we should get away from the concept of monitoring and evaluation in terms of direct impact saying that I have done 20 houses and 30 houses. Rather than that, we should ask the organizations could you document your process that could be replicated by others, right? Right. So, so for example, a, a organization in Odisha is working on on a, on a, on a particular water management uh, process. Rather than saying that how many farmers have you impacted, I should be able to work with that organization and say you have a brilliant process. Can I help you document in a better form? So, in five years, can thousand other organizations in the country replicate that? Is your process replicable? That should be the end goal rather than saying that 20 families, 30 families, 80 families. It doesn't matter. It is the process replicable because CSR money is the most expensive money. It should be gone to create. It's like saying that the biggest subsidy Google has got is the internet. The internet is actually subsidized by common resources leading to Google, Microsoft, Infosys to succeed on it. Who pays for that internet? The, 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 it is the philanthropic capital around the world that led to the creation of the internet. Similarly, for the poor, the ecosystem is led by philanthropic capital. And then you have the social enterprises 
jumping on it to actually make that impact right the processes are very cri critical and 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 that's why philanthropic money and 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 very simple example if i had to use philanthropic money in mizoram i will create a 10 crore failure fund for any mizo kid to apply for innovation and fail so that they will succeed in the future that's how the csr money should be thinking long term i'm creating a knowledge base for Mizoram, even if he fails, he or she, he knows why they failed. You are upgrading the knowledge level of the Mizoram kids, multiple levels. Very difficult to uh, evaluate that impact, but it's a measurable. I mean, you can see it yourself how that that's exactly the Bay Area succeeded. The Boston area succeeds. That's where we need to actually make CSR capital, Mizoram, Manipur, Meghalaya, incubation centers where people have access. That's one of the examples I'm telling. Right. Um, can we uh, have Ms. Uh, Suburaya Swami uh, who has raised a hand? Kindly unmute yourself and ask your question. Suburaya Swami. Yes, you're Hello. audible. Please ask your question. Yes. Uh, madam, uh, uh, good evening, madam. Uh, 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 madam, my, Karna, uh, my Karnata state say Sugaraya Swami baat kar roh. Haan, boli. Uh, madam, kya hai ye Karnat mein oh, Tungabhadra project hai na? Oh, Tungabhadra project ka under ho, oh, uh, 43% to land is uh, waste. Hamara uh, paas kya karte hai? Salt aata na? Oh, salt convert, convert ho ke? Thoda land failure hua. Ye land ko fir active karna bole to isko kya to apka pas plan hai kya? Idhar kya hai Raichur district? Karnataka mein Raichur district is one of the aspirations. Hello. 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 Connected. When he's connected, I can. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think I'll. I, my office can get touch base. We have an office in Raichur. He can. He can actually work with us. So basically, the land has gone. Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. If he joins back, we can. Uh, One question from me. Like uh, I just wanted to. Ah, Ramesh. Yeah. So, uh, sir, one of the important thing like for us uh, is to look at the civil society NGO movement and uh, always I, I worked supporting this movement across last 30 years. I have been with different funding agencies and water aid, save the children like that. I have been uh, spending my time and always uh, we find that the NGO sector has a reluctance. The moment you tell them that no, you, you, you have to look for newer areas like social enterprises. Very few of my friends, or I mean, uh, known people have uh, uh, taken up this in a different way, managed to look at microfinance as one of their social enterprise area and they're trying to support. There are very few examples uh, which they have gone to the next level of uh, uh, from the routine funding based, uh, donor based uh, program. So wh what do you think? Uh, should be the steps that they should be taking up and should should they shy away from changing it like uh, should they remain as they are most of them who always script that funding is not forthcoming but still they have not migrated to this so your views on this and what is their pointers for them that uh, they should consider and move ahead in a uh, in a system like this yeah those who are not asking questions, please. Thank you. So, Ramesh, thanks, thanks for this. I mean, you're, you're right. See, the question is: there, there are quite a few few things I see in the in the sector. Is that uh, uh, one is the uh, also the founder syndrome, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The founders also don't want to give up, uh, right? And and uh, and saying that was uh, it's it's a. And then it's a, I mean, as you know, civil society, the, the, one of the biggest thing is the hero worship, which, which also doesn't uh, bode well. I mean, how do you create a 
uh, the second third line immediately so that uh, when you start it's not about yourself i mean the civil society should think that it was created to kill itself right it's not about growing uh, it should because it started a problem it has started to uh, it's it no it was started to solve a problem and so it should have a certain date where it should kill itself or diversify or change itself if if the solutions are not reduced our problems are not reducing that means the methodology which you are doing is actually wrong and we have to change the methodology the way we do it so ramesh ji that the lot of the i have had i mean i talk to walls sometimes is easier than talk to other people in a sense ki uh, it's it's about funding nahi hai funding nahi hai funding nahi hai but funding kiske liye chahiye you are not very clear about right i said iske liye why do you need because it's already sustainable why don't you use this money in a different manner no no it's very poor so we also have this knack of patronizing poverty right so so and saying because and so there is somewhere part of it i'm saying that okay give up on the 20 25 year old uh, ngos how do we create create the new breed of people who are able to think and fast but for that ramesh ji there are no schools that actually are giving a pipeline if i have to ask a question where is my 2030 social entrepreneurs going to come from right that does not exist a channel for that uh, the methodology is not that okay where is the software engineers going to come from we have the computer science college where are the business managers we have the iams where the social entrepreneurs this typically no channels that are opened up for the thing so so to to give you answer in short form yes i i look at champions who are willing to diversify who are the champions or who are the champions inside the organization who are willing to part of it and can be incubated can we put in risk capital can we ask some of the other funders to put in risk capital into them showcase them to the other ngos that how they have diversified and that actually go ahead but some of the people it's no point talking but how do i look at new breed of people who can actually uh, make that happen uh, ramesh ji but there are quite a youngsters who are lining up but what is happening is there's no schools of thought where they can or a breed of mentors that they can actually go to that library is absent ramesh ji thank you thank you sir thank you i think that's um... in fact there was one time when we were talking about uh... if whether it will be a uh, fruitful to build a curriculum for applied social work i mean not social work from an academic perspective but from an applied perspective whether it will be fruitful to do that or not it will be for ramesh ji see one more thing is that in the social enterprise space we've also created this beauty contest na the beauty contest this fellow that fellow that under is that fellow of the year that's a beauty contest please unmute yourself if you are not asking question so 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 it's it's uh, how do we get away from that mindset i am a better social entrepreneur than others why i mean that itself defeats the purpose right okay right. uh, so i think uh, mr swami has joined again if you would uh, like to address his earlier question about the soil problem uh, so guraya swami ji uh, um, kya aapko sunai de raha hai Thanks. He is there, but I think uh, we can go ahead. Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. So there is another question in the chat box, which is also something I would like. I'm I'm also interested to know is, uh, Mr. Uh, Parida is asking that how can we raise funding for uh, rural projects in panchayats, which is not GPDP or SFC or CFC, but they are for the pan. So can we finance panchayats through a social enterprise? model or csr or some other sources no there are some restrictions uh, like social and uh, i don't know what the question meant of how do you uh, finance through a social enterprise so you the social enterprise he's can just provide asking service about, he's just the asking social... about raising funding for rural projects in panchayats so what kind of funding can be there for panchayats apart from gpdp funding sfc and cfc but i am not sure whether he wants it for the panchayat and by the panchayat or it is uh, i mean if it is okay if a social enterprise is working in the panchayat 
that clarity is not there in the, the social enterprise could actually provide services to the panchayat definitely right. uh, the social enterprises can actually be a uh, complementary services to panchayat or for example uh, there are social enterprises that provide health services to health institutions that are run by panchayats for example right, right? Uh, or uh, social enterprises come and give training to uh, the panchayat members who are into x amount of agriculture for example so that could be complementary services but depends on the needs of the different panchayat um, but sometimes the direct funding is not required by the panchayat itself panchayat can actually offload a lot of the work to the social enterprises to actually deliver it in the most efficient manner right. uh, we have another question from mr shrikar reddy and uh, he is the uh, mahatma gandhi national fellow in the kargil district of ladakh and he is uh, working with district administration for skill development and livelihood promotion and he wants to connect with you and discuss with you more on the kargil based scenario and there is he is saying that there is no social enterprise that he has come across in kargil so if uh, you would give your contact details you would like to discuss yeah yeah please please uh, contact me uh, i will directly get in touch with you sir. Uh, dr b s negi from himachal pradesh university is asking whether uh, there is any uh, opportunity so he is a faculty in uh, the hpu and he wants to know if there are any internship opportunity for post graduate student uh, who are doing mba in rural development in uh, the csr field or in social enterprise field so they do have theoretical orientation of csr in their last semester no there are numerous opportunities that selco itself provides uh, to interns uh and also there are a lot of social enterprise partners that we have it depends on what the interest is so we for example we have partners who work in we are ourselves in the energy sector the water sector governance sector at the block level education sector so there are a lot of social enterprise that we are partnered with uh, uh, internships uh, right from 10th grade onwards to phd level uh, quite a bit of opportunity but what is the interest of the student Def definitely we could tailor make it for for people yeah Right. Uh, Dr. Negi, I hope your uh, question is answered and you will connect with uh, Dr. Harish for more details. Sure, thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chetna uh, Samajik Sangstha, uh, they are again asking, Panchayat evang Panchayat Pratinidhiyo ke sashakti karan ke liye CSR fund kaise liya ja sakta hai? So that is a question we get, it's a recurring question in our programs because we are also so how can panchayats take the funding like who will be the person to apply for the funding or whether the work goes to an enterprise so this is a recurring question in all that's, of a, that's a good problem to work on together to create a platform or a or an entity that could be the uh, uh, uh the entity that actually gives the safeguard to see so the some of the most hesitation of csr organizations is that panchayat i mean there's a negative feeling right the question is how is accountability? I think if we are able to create a small consortium where we are able to convince some of the CSR guys that we are we could vet it, and and you can we will be the we'll take the brunt of safety and and shortlisting and doing a due diligence on the panchayat, and that's a form an interesting social enterprise to actually start off or a, or a platform, and let's think of more. I, I think this is something very doable ma'am, in a sense. Uh, which becomes a center, a platform that that the CSR has a faith in, but yes. that then offlets to the panchayats. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a raised hand from uh, Mr. J.B. Suresh. Please unmute and ask your question. J.B. Suresh. Suresh ji, if I am audible, you can unmute and ask your question. No, no, madam, no, madam. Sorry. Okay, so you have just raised your hand. <laughs> no question. Okay, fine. Um, I also, yeah, I, I will provide the mail IDs of uh, the speaker and all the. Okay, Mr. Jaspal, please unmute and ask. Hello. Yeah, I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so your uh, journey was very wonderful, sir, and I, I really uh, admire the uh, fact that you have said about uh, Mohan Hegreji, and uh, that's the real uh, uh, fact that we have to understand. I think everyone we need to understand, and uh, that's the place where the opportunity is also lying, sir. Right. So, my concern was very simple, sir, because uh, I under what I understood is is, is 
the i am not using the term uh, uh, with related to you know social or something else but my simple question was very like you know uh, do we see that the uh, uh, micro entrepreneurship is the future of rural that is my concern sir because uh, I, i i don't use i that's what i said i'm not using any term like social or anything else or sure, even sure. you know something else because i don't want to use that term when it comes to rural it comes to rural so it has to be something very clear so just wanted to have a clarity from your yeah, you, no no you're completely right see the question is the i'll first tell you the problem and then i'll come to the solution sir the the problem for the micro enterprises is that we as a country or society as humanity or the world we are not innovating for many of these for example a blacksmith blower has been working on the same technology for 250 years for a blacksmith blower for a roti rolling machine for anything else because the younger generation takes innovations for an app based or anybody else even the iits for example i'll question the iits that what innovation have you done for the micro enterprises in the rural areas right how have you created technology that lessens the drudgery how do you make it gender sensitive that the women can become entrepreneurs right innovations are not focused on the basic livelihoods of the poor it's all on app based everything which is good enough to write in your resumes moment we make lot of these innovations aspirational you will suddenly see a lot of micro enterprises coming up women led men led micro enterprises like solar powered roti rolling machine solar powered silk weaving machine how do we innovate drudgery reduction technologies for farming for small holding farmers i'm not interested in the large holding farmers the small holding farmers that's where the key is and that's where the future is that's the only way where distribution of wealth can happen in an equitable manner is successfully creating an ecosystem for micro enterprises uh jaspal singh ji you have hit the nail uh, on the head that's exactly where our country because why is it important for our country not only for the financial stability and the social sustainability of a country like ours but we could also be a leaders for africa and and latin america and southeast asia because we are a paradox of a country of an overdeveloped and an underdeveloped we can be the true r and d center for rest of the world which is poor we will be the knowledge center for micro enterprises whether it is barber shop whether it is a roti rolling machine whether it is a silk weaving machine whether it is a uh, sugar cane threshing for example we are a country who should be focusing on innovation of those livelihoods creating those things that can then succeed in other countries thank you so much dr hande i hope jaspal ji's question was uh, addressed adequately we have uh, a lot of scope to discuss these things more and i'm sure that we will uh, have more in depth discussions but there is another raised hand uh, again from sp i guess your name is sharat prasad if i'm right you can speak mute yourself yeah thank also. you ma'am good afternoon sir uh, this uh -huh. is sharat pant uh, i am working with uh, this uh, csr programs and uh, i observed that most of my ngo colleagues they are afraid of approaching csr fund because uh this csr fund mostly the uh, companies are spending for uh, to fulfill their vested interest like uh, one of the ngo uh, one of the company i am not taking its name in rajasthan udaipur district they polluted the area uh, because of their uh, effluent uh, this uh, without treatment they are uh, and they because of their this uh, chemical water the nearby waterways are polluted and even the uh, this um, um the animals and um, people also getting affected so to cool down the people they are just uh, throwing uh, giving money to ngos to cool down the people so uh, th in this way they are uh, using uh, they are for, um, uh, to, uh, they, uh, to keep the people calm they are using their csr funds so most of the time the ngo are afraid of this type of companies Uh, who are using their funds for the uh, to fulfill their vested interest right. so i i i just ask uh, i i just um, know your uh, view on this sir thank you no no definitely sir uh, sir i'm i'm glad you asked this question because there are there are quite a few companies which are who are absolutely have the heart in the right place sir 
and and uh, uh, and and those are the organizations which you could uh, we definitely i mean it's sense that we also have a i mean uh, sp sub uh, if you write an email or text me there's a criteria that you select we select uh, the organizations we look at the anti zens where does the money come from where does the money actually gain spent how are their profits been spent at all and then we select those organizations to actually work on uh, for the csr i mean you i mean you need not be say every society uh, and it's opposite is also true a lot of csr companies don't want to work with a lot of the ngos they are they are afraid of the ngos <laughs> right ki <laughs> so it's it's a both side thing i, I think somewhere we need to pick up the good ngos and create a platform and the good csr companies to actually work showcase and that's the only way to push back the other companies in the world or or the bad ones to uh, get off but there's a certain criteria of choosing and if some of these ngos could approach us we could actually telling this are criteria and this is where but the small ngos i agree sp sub there is a lot of uh, i mean it's it's like a mount everest to climb for them to look at sasa money and i think a platform needs to be created dr ruchira i have to step because of the african entrepreneurs i hope uh, but absolutely yeah. absolutely we can uh, actually we are almost uh, reaching the closure of the program now and uh, let me uh, really thank you from the bottom of my heart for your time and being so patient with us and discussing with us such uh, uh, so many questions and you have kind of addressed all of them uh, there are no more, more questions in the inbox so uh, it's uh, we have addressed all the questions that we have and i think the recurring theme that are coming up is to talk about this platform that we uh, are planning right. for at least for the grassroots ngos and uh, to how to kind of become that nodal part body which will help them reach the funding and the Absolutely. other way. But so we will have more time. discussions with you and thank you so much for your time yeah. and thank you to our participants also for joining us for this lecture and see you in the next lecture series and with that very very good evening to you and see you in the next program thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you